Hey everyone, this is Daniel, and in today's video, we're going to talk about the more improvements to Power Apps Mixed Reality. And I'll first start with the new scaling feature that's come up, where you can actually take those 3D models and you can scale them bigger, smaller, or even relocate them. Next, I'll talk about the box draw property. And this is a really neat property which has been released to actually help you not only speed up, but also improve your measurement. And I'll finally end with the label property. That label property really helps you kind of list all the items that you're going to measure, and that way you don't forget anything. So stick around, it'll be fun. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. Now, the first one that I'm gonna show is the scalability feature. And for that, I didn't have to do anything new. In fact, you've actually seen me use one of these apps in all my demos, so that's all I did. I just went ahead and opened it. But one of my best practices, especially when new features are coming out, is open the app and do anything, like a slight change, something so that you can actually go ahead to your file and you can go ahead and save it and then publish it again. So that's what I, all I did, was I went ahead and opened up my existing app that I already have, my mixed reality feature, and over there, I was able to go ahead and test it. So here is basically my app, Again, didn't have to change anything in the control and I just went ahead and tested it. So now that you know how to do it, let me go and show you what this feature is all about. So here we are using the Power Apps mobile device and I'm using it in my iPhone. And the one that you see on the top, among the first on the recent apps, it says Fun with Mixed Reality 3D. That's the exact same app that we had opened up in the Power Apps Studio. Now I'm gonna go and click on it. And in the app, I'll use the button on the bottom. It says View in Mixed Reality. And when that comes up, it gives me three models, I can, um, four models I can pick from. I'll select Gazebo, and I'll click View in Mixed Reality. So it's loading, and now I'm just pointing to my flow, floor. Now, you already see these dots appear, which is basically it's mapping your location. If you don't see those dots immediately appear, basically follow with the steps it just said, is that lean it a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, and that helps it to kind of almost map your location. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just lean it a little forward and I'll do what it says, is tap anywhere in the place. And the moment I do that, I have got a big gazebo in my office and it says, I'm inside the model. If you just notice what it said, it said I'm inside the model. And it's kind of neat, but I've already shown you this before. So let's actually take it to the next level. Now, I'm gonna show you this new feature and that is the scaling functionality. So you don't see me do this, but what I'm doing is I'm actually now holding my phone with both the hands and I'm gonna use my thumbs to scale it. So I've actually placed my thumbs on two sides of the screen, on each side, the left and the right. And the moment I do that and I start to move my thumbs, you see this 100% show up. That is the new scaling functionality. And what I can do now is I can actually start moving my thumbs closer towards each other. And as I do it, the scale is getting smaller. As you can see, it's been down to 53%. And the more I put my thumbs closer towards each other, it's actually getting closer and closer. If your thumbs do get to touch each other, you can completely release them, go outside and get them back again. And, but look at that, it's just, it's really neat. It's actually shrinking, shrinking, and it's at 16%. So I kind of like where this is, but now I want to relocate this. So after shrinking, I can actually move it to a different location. So I'm going to actually now put, place my one thumb on it, and I'm going to go ahead and move it, and I'm actually going to use it as a prop. So I like this shelf location. It's right next to all my certificates. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. So I'll select it and I'll make it a little bit bigger, again using my two thumbs, and I'm gonna move my thumbs away from each other, and as I do it, you see it's at 19%. 19% looks good, so I'm gonna leave it as is. Now, regardless of what size it is, that other features that it had, where I can go and select it, and as you can see, those arrows are pointing out, and I can go ahead and start moving, and I can start making it you know, from a, from a different size. I wanna see the front, I wanna see the back, that still remains. So no matter how small the scale is, you still have that functionality. Now, while we are here, there is this another feature which kind of sneaked in, and it's a really neat one, but I want to talk about that. So we are going to keep this 3D model prop in this location, and I'm going to intentionally move my phone away from it. And we'll start from the right. So when I start from the right, watch what happens on the left side of my screen. So as I move it, as I move it, you see this arrow appear and it's pointing to where your original prop was. That's neat. This means that it actually mapped the location of the original prop, and now it knows, based on that geolocation of that prop, where my phone is. This is huge. 
And I'm really glad that it kind of sneaked in, but I, it's, it's big, so I wanted to bring that to your attention. But the, watch the arrows, right? So now if, when I'm moving to the right, the arrow is pointing to the left. If I go and start moving down, you see how the arrow is now pointing up. It knows the exact location of that place. In fact, if I go ahead and now point it even a little bit down and I start moving over there, you see how the arrows, you know, has now gone up. If I go ahead and start moving to the right, it knows the exact geolocation of that. And in fact, if I were to just go ahead and now drop my phone down, it comes and gives you this message. It says tracking lost point device at the surface and moved again. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that which means that even though the tracking was lost, it doesn't lose the location of the geolocation of that place. It still remembers it. I just gotta go ahead and pick up my phone again. And the same thing, if I go and start moving around, it'll know that that location is over there. I really found this location sensor, whatever you call this feature, really neat, and I wanted to bring that to your attention as well. So there you go, this is the new tracking and the scalability functionality. That new scalability feature is awesome, but let's not stop over there. Let's continue with this fun. And now I'll talk about the next big thing, which is the box draw property. Now for the box draw property to appear, you have to go ahead and build an app or use an existing one. And you go to your mixed reality one. And over there, I'm gonna go ahead and do the measure in mixed reality. Now when you do the measure in mixed reality, you drop it over here, this new feature will show up. And that is the box draw. Now, in case it doesn't show up in your tenant, here's a little trick that you can do to go ahead and see some new features that show up. What I do is I go to my admin center and I go ahead and create a trial environment. Now for this to appear, you have to have the Power Platform admin role because you will have to be able to come to the PPAC or the Power Platform admin center and create an environment. So just keep that in mind that you can always come to your environment over here. You can click on a new one and in the type, go ahead and select the trial one or whichever one of them it is, trial. And then in the regions, select the preview. That's how you're able to go ahead and see all these new features come up. So thought I'll share a little tidbit with you all. Again, remember you will need that Power Platform admin role. All right, so I'm gonna close this. And that's when I went ahead and created a uh, trial environment. And because I did, I was able to see this new functionality. And so that's what the box draw is. Now basically the box draw, as the name states, it lets you draw a box type design really fast for measurements. And to do that, I'm gonna walk you through with this example and show you how these labels work. So this is also where I'm gonna introduce you to the label property and how you can go ahead and leverage that to improve the mixed reality and the measurements piece. So in the measurements control that I've selected, on the top left, where you go and take a look at these properties, you've got all of these neat things over there. You've got items, item box, uh, draw, label, so on and so forth. What we're gonna do is in the items, in the property, I'm actually just gonna go and build a table. And that table is where I'm gonna define a few labels that I want. So here's how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna go ahead and now type in this formula just to build a very simple, label, uh, very simple table and I'll define the labels over there. So I'm gonna now just type in table. And as I do the table, it goes ahead and opens a uh, curly bracket. So I'll just go down and close my curly bracket. And I just like to maintain this, form, uh, this format, so that's what I'll do. And now I'm gonna put in two curly brackets. I'll go ahead and put my comma and another two curly brackets. And that's how I'm gonna do it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is label. I'm gonna type in this label property and I'll go and say, the first thing I wanna rec uh, record is the area. So I'll do that. And then this is going to be of a measurement type area. I'm actually gonna say that because you see right here, the measurement type is of type distance, it is type area, so on and so forth. I can do the exact same thing over here as well. I can force it. So this is a little neat trick that I'm showing you, how you can go ahead and force the different measurements to make sure the user actually doing it. But let's do this and then in the test, you'll actually see how it works. So I'm gonna now type in the measurement type. I'll type in and make sure that you follow the syntax. You see how the M for the measurement was lowercase and the T was the uppercase type? Do that, all right? Then I'll put the, double, the colon and inside the double brackets, I'll type in area and I'll do comma. And now I'm gonna say the box draw property go ahead and keep that as a true, as a true. So I did that and everything looks good. Let's go over to the next one. And over here, I'm, its label is going to be distance. So I'll go and type distance in, comma. Its measurement type, well, that will just be distance. Nothing fancy about that, all right? So I'll just type that in. Again, inside the double quotes, distance, all lowercase. And that's it. I'm not gonna use a box draw for that. I'm just gonna leave it as is. And this is basically it. We've gone ahead and taken care of that. 
I see that there's an error, so let's go ahead and highlight the error. Oh, the error is actually coming from a home different place. It's, I said put labels, it's just a label, it's a singular, and there you go, the error has gone away. All right, next, now that we've gone ahead and defined the label, I wanna go ahead and take a look at a few other properties. So the first one I'm gonna do is item labels, that's perfect. I also wanna go ahead and I'll take a look at the items measurement type, and the items measurement type is going to be measurement type. So it's gonna be measurement type. Remember the formula we just put in before? Perfect. And then the items draw, I mean items box draw, over there it's already box draw, so we've gone ahead and defined that. So all the labels and everything, you've gone ahead and populated that really well. And now we actually need to go ahead and test the app to really see how this works. But it's important that you understand this piece first, otherwise the demo is not gonna make any sense. So did you get this? Awesome, let's go and do the demo. So the new app that we just built, we call it More Improvements to Power Apps Mixed Reality Demo. I've gone ahead and published it. And now we are in our mobile device and I'll go to the Power Apps mobile app. Now something's gonna happen and I'm gonna walk you through that. Now just assume that I've gone ahead and you know, published it. I'm kind of looking around, looking around over here. I'm even doing a search, you know, but I cannot find that new app that I just published. Well, what happened, Daniel? Why is that going on? Well, one of the reasons that's happening is because we went ahead and created a trial environment for that, and those by default do not show up on your mobile devices. In order for that to happen, you've got to go ahead and click on your profile name on the top left, which is next to home. I'm gonna go and click on that. And then, right at the bottom, you see it says, show non-production apps. You've got to go ahead and toggle that as on. Only then will it actually show you that apps from that trial environment as well. So that's a little tidbit that I had to make sure I share with you. And now that app that we created, it should show up over here. Now, if you still cannot find the app over here, here's one more thing that you should do. Go straight into your Power Apps. Make sure that you've actually gone into that environment that we created, which is the environment for temp review. Here's the app that we just created, the one which is Mixed Reality Demo. Go ahead and click on it. You have to at least do that once, and if any pop-up needs to come for, you know, for uh, your permissions, such as this camera one, it'll go ahead and do that, but your app is at least used once. Go ahead and do this before you go and try to search for it in your mobile device. That's a little tidbit that I'm gonna share with you. So I'm gonna now go back to my mobile device over here, and there we'll be able to now just do a refresh, which is basically just pulling all the apps down, and our new app should show up basically right on the top. There you go, see, more improvements to Power Apps. It showed up over there. So. I'm sharing a whole bunch of new tidbits with you, you guys today. So I'm gonna select it, I'm gonna click on it, and it's going ahead and loading this new app that we built here. Also, it's asking me if I wanna use the camera. I'm gonna click on Allow, and there we go. So now I'll click on Measure in Mixed Reality. And you see on the top right there, where it says Area, that is the labels that we added. The labels, we remember we added two. It was the area and the distance, so now it shows up over there. And this really helps your end users, kind of giving them the list of things. Okay, I want you to first you know, measure the area. Then I want you to go ahead and measure the distance. The moment you give them this label option, it kind of gives them a line by line item of what they should do as far as measurements go. That way they don't forget about it. So what we'll do now is we'll actually just go ahead and since on the top, the area is already selected, we don't have to do anything. I could always click on it and click on it again, but it's always there. Now remember, this area is the one which has the box functionality. So let's even test that. And I'll go and now click on top. I'll click on the, you know, go bottom there. I'll go to the right and you see that? I didn't have to go all the way to the top and back left again. This is the beauty of that box functionality. And therefore, just as a recap, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the left, you know, the, the bottom uh, icon which you see. I'll go ahead and now click the plus again and I'll go and you know, measure down. I'll go ahead and do that there. And the moment I clicked on the complete for that, it went ahead and created the box. Now I can go ahead and click on the, uh, you know, take a picture, all of that. You basically understood what it is. Next, have you noticed on the top over here, where it says distance, it automatically went and switched to the distance. Remember, it was on the area. So if I click on it, it is now telling me that as far as your labels go and the measurements, you've already taken the area. So this is great, it's on the top. Next thing it's saying, go ahead and finish the distance. So I'll finish that as well. So I'm just gonna randomly now pick a distance I wanna take from here, complete that over there, and I even have the distance. So I can go and click on that. And it works and it works really well over there. It went ahead and grabbed all of these things. The neat thing about this is that now when I go ahead and create a gallery, 
in that gallery, it'll actually tell me that these are the measurements that you took. You took the first measurement of an area, the first measurement of a distance, and therefore it is actually helping you remember what all measurements that you did. So to end with a full demo, here's another app which is built very similar to the one that we just created. And if I now go ahead and click on the button over there, you see on the top that label showed up. That label is to tell me that, hey, this measurement you're taking is for an award and we're gonna get its area, hence the name area, award area. And I'll go ahead and now select from the top. I'll go ahead and do a measurement to the bottom. I'll just go ahead and do a measurement to the right. And since I had selected the box area, it automatically did all the measurement. I'll even go ahead and take a picture of it. Picture looks good. And now when I go ahead and submit it, in the app, now you notice on the bottom right above the picture, it says award area. That label really helps me understand which section of the measurement that I did. And now it even tells me that, hey, this was the, the uh, measurement that you took for the award area. And it really helps me keep track of all the measurements. This is the power of the new features and functionalities. So wasn't that awesome? I just walked you through a whole bunch of goodies that are going to come out to the mixed reality 3D models and the measurements. I also shared a really nice tip with you on how you can go and see all these previews come out by using the preview environment, but you need that Power Platform admin role for that. So hopefully this was helpful. And as always, keep using Power Apps. Hey everyone, hopefully you found this video useful. And if you did, can you help me help you? Can you subscribe to this YouTube channel? Because remember, I provide fresh content on a weekly basis and it's 100% free. So if you have subscribed, thank you so much and pass the word. But if you haven't, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.